Good evening to those of you who are just joining us. We will be starting in just a few moments. Whose music are we listening to? <laughs> uh, this is actually the Maccabees. It's weirdly fuzzy. I've been called weirdly fuzzy myself. <laughs> the whole clone family. Very excited about zooming. <laughs> Is this for the student and the parent? I thought it was just for the parent, but maybe I, oh, the students should be there too? No, these students are like <laughs> graduates that just have nothing better to do oh, with their time. Okay. okay I'm, the actual okay. middle schooler is not interested. Okay, I'm glad you're here. To me, she looks like a middle schooler. What do I know? Okay. She was very recently. Okay, good. Well, yeah. now okay. she's a high Thank schooler. You. Very different. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, 
Good evening, everyone. It's, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today. Uh, I know it can be difficult sometimes to arrange schedules, to attend evening meetings. So please know that we very much appreciate you being here and we'll try our best to make sure it's a valuable experience. We are incredibly excited to have our students returning to campus in just about two weeks. Uh, obviously, we believe in-person education is the very best way to meet the educational and socio-emotional needs of our students. And so we've taken every possible step to do so safely. That said, many, if not most of you, were able to attend the August 13th webinar on reopening. So tonight's webinar has a different focus. And while we may touch on some COVID-specific matters, our intent tonight is to get everyone ready for what's really going to be, while somewhat different, an excellent year. In just a few moments, I will turn the floor over to our amazing head of middle school, Stephanie Bloom, who will begin by sharing a division level update, including introducing our middle school teams. We'll follow by looking at schedules for each possible learning scenario and then move into questions and answers, beginning with a few frequently asked questions. Uh, please note that in the interest of time, we have combined and will continue to combine similar questions that might be asked in different ways. If you have questions that you haven't asked yet, or if you want to ask follow-up questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat box. Only the hosts will see your question. But first, I want to start with a, uh, a little bit of a, a little Bissell Torah. And uh, here at Bernard's L, we have 54 central Jewish values that we try and teach each student over the course of their career. And tonight, I want to focus specifically on one of these, which is our theme for the year, Achrayut. Achrayut connects in obvious ways and perhaps in some not so obvious ways to how we live with COVID, how we deal with issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, which will be an ongoing point of focus for us this year, and in how we interact and live together on a daily basis. And in a typically Jewish way, uh, I want to look carefully at this value, this phrase, both uh, in terms of its concept and in terms of its linguistic makeup, because it's one of the most powerful words we have at our disposal. So Ahrayut is a specific kind of social responsibility. It's this moral belief that as individuals, we are responsible, not just for ourselves, but for the well-being of others. And if we look at the word, each individual letter contributes to our understanding of the word. So Ahrayut begins with the first letter of the Aleph, Aleph, reminding us of the importance of this value and also reminding us that since Aleph is the letter we use to abbreviate Ani or me, that we ourselves are the ones who bear this responsibility. If we add the second letter, Ches, we have Aleph Chet, which means brother, Ach. It reminds us that we are obligated to take care not only of ourselves, but also of our brothers. The next letter is Reish, and so now we have Acher, or other, and that's actually both linguistically and conceptually the root of Achrayu. The other is a key phrase in Judaism, as we are reminded that we were the other ones, and so we must always remember that we are responsible for the welfare of others, even the stranger. When we add the next letter, Yud, we get Ahare, which means after. And that's to remind us that the consequences of our action, which come afterwards, are things that we have to continue to follow and to keep track of. When we add the Vav, we get Aharav, which means after him, reminding us to follow our leaders when they have the welfare and responsibility of everyone, including the other, in mind. And finally, we add the top, which is the last letter of the alphabet. So we've gone from the first letter to the last. And it brings us to Ahrayut. And it's a moral responsibility for those around us. It's not the same kind of responsibility that we mean when we say, I'm responsible or I am accountable for my action. Rather, the, it refers to the positive mitzvah to acknowledge I have the responsibility to make the needs of others my own. And this is something that uh, we take very seriously and which we are using as our theme for the year uh, throughout our study, both of general studies and Jewish studies. So thank you for indulging me in a little bit of Torah. 
And uh, with that, I am going to turn the floor over to Stephanie Bloom, our amazing head of middle school. And uh, Stephanie, please take it away. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, this is not scripted, but I just have to tell you when I see um, Elsie and Sadie um, in the Cohen's screen, I get beyond excited, as happy as I am to see all of you as parents. I really cannot wait to see your kids. Um, this week has been incredibly exciting as we welcome back faculty. But for tonight, we're gonna focus in on some pieces together. I'll have a chance to um, go ahead and introduce you to our grade level teams and we'll talk about that. Um, and then it will be able to take a look at um, in-person and remote learning plans as well as taking um, a look at what to me is the most exciting and most important, but the education and the excitement and all the things that we have in store for your children as we welcome them back. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm thrilled tonight to have some of my colleagues with me. Um, joining me this evening are Lauren El Mafti, our Director of Student Services, and Eric Keitel, our Director of High School Counseling. Um, thank you both so much, and please jump in as we go, as this is a, a dialogue. Um, please join me at any point. Most importantly in our introductions tonight, while this is not the traditional way that I get to welcome you, welcome to our fifth grade families. Um, I am so excited. I feel as though I've gotten to know many of your students over the summer and talking with many of you or hearing about them from Karen Levitt as we work together and I'm so excited to see them. We have a tremendous fifth grade team this year. You'll see many familiar faces on here and some new ones. Um, we this year are excited that Hillary Love will be moving up with our students into middle school uh, as a learning specialist. She will work primarily with our fifth and sixth grades. And we also are excited to welcome Claire Winter to the middle school. Um, she will be teaching history. Claire brings with her to our fifth grade experience, not just in the classroom here in the States, but also teaching abroad um, in Turkey and Thailand, and just brings a wealth of information and excitement to the classroom. In our sixth grade, um, you'll see again a number of familiar faces and some really important moves that we've made in thinking about how we support our students transitioning from grade to grade this year. We have our own Rachel Jury moving up into the sixth grade, which I'm excited to have her follow her students, as well as Jonathan Horowitz, who supported many students in Hebrew and Jewish studies last year, um, and Hillary Love again also a familiar face to our students. Joanna Thompson, you'll see, and of course, Julie Aberdell. And new to our team, we have Bridget Porterfield, who will be teaching reading and writing workshop. She comes to us with a wealth of information and knowledge, having led and created curriculum for GEMS World Academy um, in grades six through 12, as well as being schooled um, out of Columbia Teachers College in New York, um, focused on teaching and learning our reading and writing workshop. And Valentina Sorescu, who will be teaching math in sixth through eighth grade. She is coming from EMSA, the Illinois Math and Science Academy. So we are absolutely thrilled to welcome these new members to our sixth grade team. And our seventh grade, um, you'll see many familiar faces here as well. Uh, Kate Gorski will be serving as our seventh grade learning specialist. She'll be working with students across the grade. And new to our team this year, we welcome Amy Heller, um, who will be teaching sixth through eighth grade math. Amy comes from um, outside of Cleveland, having taught over six years in freshman year. Um, high school classes, as well as middle school. She also, little piece of trivia, had Allison Horowitz um, in, as her principal, as a student, so something exciting. And Eleanor Corey, who joins us having taught chemistry at Lane Tech, um, as well as more recently being at West Park Elementary in science and our own Lauren Ludwig will not only be teaching math this year um, in seventh and eighth, but also picking up some science as well. 
in our eighth grade team, you'll see that eighth grade looks like we have a ton of people here. And that has to do with all the exciting additional pieces that we do in eighth grade, many of those traditions that you look forward to. This year, new, we have Hillary Gorash joining, Gorash Wald. I always want to make sure we get the full name in. She is going to be joining us as a full eighth grade team member and an advisor this year. We have Shosh Bernstein join, joining our eighth grade team, who will be working with Joey Shapiro on our TUL. So we're very excited about thinking about that. And then, of course, um, we are excited to have Kyle and Brandon supporting us from the arts and physical education and athletics department. And um, while we will be excited to welcome Danny Steele back later this year, I am thrilled to welcome Matt Rieger um, to serve in place of Danny for a long-term leave. Many of you already know Matt. He's coached at our school in the athletics department for the past 12 years knows every one of our students, um, but also brings tremendous knowledge around the humanities, specifically reading and writing, and I'm excited to see him there. One note um, that I wanna share with you as we go to our next slide, we have a number of faculty that are stretching across the middle school this year. And I'll get into a piece of that when we get into um, looking at schedules and what a day looks like, but we have, you'll see, um, returning, all, no one knew on this slide. We have our math specialist, Melissa Mack, Karen Manilow's expertise will be back. And of course, all of our specialists, as well as Sarah Sweet, um, our middle school social worker. Um, so as we get started tonight, I wanna stress the importance of those grade level teams. This is a new shift in middle school, and it's something that is going to really um, help to connect and thread the learning, not just across a grade level, but also vertically from grade to grade. In essence, to be honest with you, COVID has probably pushed us forward in this light in a really great direction that I'm extremely excited about. So we have been working all summer and that includes so many of our awesome teachers um, and faculty members in really thinking about four key scenarios. And I'll go into depth in a few, in, to a few of these. The first one is that idea of in-person learning. That's the one that I think we're all most excited about, is welcoming your kids into school and being with them. It might look a little bit different this year. Desks may be apart, we may have masks on, but the warmth and the values and the rigor that we bring every day to Bernard Zell is still in that in-person learning. Um, we also have a scenario of distance learning, meaning if the middle school or the whole school or a whole grade level goes out, we'll talk about that. And then we have two other um, scenarios that we've looked into and are prepared for, a cohort going into distance learning, meaning that if we take the sixth grade and one of our three sixth grade sections were to go out, we are prepared to deliver the same level of instruction that we would if they were right there with us in the building. And then the last one is something that we all want to be aware of, extended absence considerations. As we place health and safety at the very front of what we do, we know that there may be a time when a student may need to go out because a sibling may have something or there may be a, a health need in the family and we want to respect and honor those and make sure that our students are following pace with all of us in the school and moving forward with their instruction, not missing a beat. Um, if we could go ahead, Gary, and move to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit in depth about in-person learning and distance learning. So in-person learning, when we're in the school, Students are going to arrive doors open at 745. Unlike other years where they might mull through the building or hang out in the hallways, they're going to head right away into their gibouche room. Um, that will serve as their main classroom. Um, they will participate in a schedule across the day that's divided into 55 minute class periods. This is something thanks to Colleen Coyle and and her incredible work, our Director of Operations and partnership with me, we've been able to provide content area classes daily 
as well as our Hebrew and Jewish studies. Um, and really, instead of having random classes that are 30 minutes and others that might be 45 minutes, we have provided some more stability for our students and predictability in this. New this year is our rotation of specials. And you may remember the slide that showed people who are stretching across the middle school. This year, oh, thank you so much. Um, this year, we are going to look at our specials, meaning physical education, the, ar the arts, a little bit differently to maintain health and safety. How we will be operating these is providing an in-depth opportunity of study to your kids, meaning that a student may have five to six weeks of physical education, and they may have that then four times in the course of a week, being able to really dig in and focus in on some awesome units that Kyle has prepared, or an art with Ms. Sherman. And then following that rotation, they would then move after six weeks to another rotation. So they may go from the first six weeks in physical education to then the next six weeks in performing arts. This allows for our specialists to be anchored in one grade level at a time, seeing all the sections within that grade and also being able um, to see students multiple times in a week and dig in more deeply. Um, also, I just wanna share that we are having to make some changes, thinking about contact sports and what, what drills or what experiences in PE that may be new. Um, ping pong tables are sure to roll out as is badminton. And we're also thinking about how to get some of those great traditions like roller skating still in for our kids. In our music classes, however, anyone who's had one of their kiddos playing a band instrument at home knows that there is a piece of blowing into an instrument or singing um, and we are going to have to make changes to that. We'll be offering virtual opportunities in the evening to students to continue their work with instruments um, but during the day uh, Sharky and Mr. Mather have really ramped up and will be providing music making opportunities but in different ways. And then you'll notice that in the morning and in the afternoon, we know that kiddos being in a classroom all day, they need to be able to get up and stretch their legs before it was in the hallway. Um, it might have been going to your locker or sneaking for an extra washroom break. Uh, we're going to provide a morning and afternoon recess. When we, or if we, have to go to distance learning, we are prepared to turn on a dime. Um, our schedule, which you will be receiving in the first week of school, in the event that we go to distance learning, will have much of an upgrade from what you saw in the spring. And much of that comes from your feedback. There will be a daily live gibouche. And now we've upped the amount of live classes. You'll see four live classes per day, including daily live math meaning two potentially live in the morning and two in the afternoon, as well as two asynchronous classes. You're also going to see students not only have active classwork and project-based learning, but you're also going to see some homework this year. Um, if I might indulge, imagine if we go into these classrooms as our teachers have been preparing all summer and now to utilize new platforms, students will actually exper experience a workshop um, class where they might have a direct teach or a mini lesson, but then potentially go into breakout rooms and work together on an inquiry in math or on a book club in reading. Um, it may look different subject to subject, but we're really focused on how to provide access and equity to students, how to take that collaboration just as our teachers did today and really think about making collaboration more of a participatory process. We want them engaged and involved. Um, and then in the event that one cohort moves to distance learning, meaning if your child's individual class needs to go out, they will simply follow the regular in-person learning schedule uh, because we would have two other classes potentially in the grade level in school. So a lot of information there, but I think really important to share and more will be coming home to you so that you can have a visual to support both schedules for you and your child. 
if we can move to, here we go. This is the slide that I get the most excited about. Um, I am a curriculum nut and I love teaching and learning. And I believe that I'm really fortunate to have um, the strongest mishpacha of a family during the school day. And that is with our teachers in middle school. This year, we have a number of new pieces. Teachers all across the summer worked on an assessment and instruction committee. And one of the things that we talked about over and over, much from feedback and surveys of students and from parents, was that we need to take the pulse of student learning immediately to assess for not only summer slide this year, but if there was a dip potentially from any distance learning experience. Um, one example of this is actually going to start before your kids even arrive back on campus. New this year, it should come out in the next few days by the end of the week, we will be conducting a triannual writing assessment across all grade levels. Essentially, this is kind of like having a writing prompt and having students write cold to a prompt. But then instead of that piece of writing just anchoring with the reading and writing teacher, all of our teachers are going to dig in on understanding who our kids are as readers and as writers and being able to support their growth as writers across all content area classrooms. Our fifth grade, I want to just give you a couple of highlights in each of the grades to get you hopefully as excited as I am. Our fifth grade um, will be diving again into JCAT. For those of you that are new fifth grade parents, um, we participate in a course that comes out of University of Michigan, where our students use an online platform, connect with students all across the country in Jewish day schools, and they take on a simulation or a court case that anchors in a very relevant issue um, that students will then argue through that case or see through the eyes of a historical figure of their choice. So not only are we looking at something historically that's important and important in terms of current events, but we are also supporting that work of perspective in, um, that we see in our reading and writing classes. Then if you take a look in our sixth grade, um, we are looking all across the middle school right now at, and our whole school at diversity, equity, and inclusion work. This is something that is not accomplished overnight or in a week, a month, or a year. More like a lifelong journey, but something that under Gary's leadership and many of our teachers and faculty, we are deeply committed to. Um, we will see work that our teachers will be doing to grow themselves. We hope that many of you will join us. And specifically, we're going to take a look at our curriculum one piece that's already in place and by no means is it enough but it is a starting point that we continue to grow in the past our sixth graders have had a bi-weekly class focused on race class and culture more so looking at um, looking at the great migration um, and then dipping into race our very own joanna thompson built this course and this year we felt it important to instead of having a nine week class to actually thread this all the way through the school year and to add another robust piece to our history curriculum. So our sixth graders will be doing some really important work and I hope that this class becomes a catalyst for all that we do across our middle school and beyond. Our seventh graders, many of you have spoken and I have heard, I have heard you loud and clear that you're tired of letters from an overnight camp with grammatical errors, um, or that your child might not know where something is on a map, or that you so wish that they would get out of text vocabulary and embrace some of a richer vocabulary. And so in addition to continuing the rich instruction that we have in reading and writing, this year our seventh grade team um, specifically Doug Davis, Heather Siegel, and Kate Gorski will be piloting a new skills-based humanities class that will focus on vocabulary development, another boost of grammar, as well as geography. This piece will be more of a skills-based class. And then our eighth graders, um, there's so many exciting things to share and we're not missing a beat with all of the things that our eighth grade experience promises each year. Things may look a little bit different, 
but we're in no way shying away. Um, our eighth graders in science, for example, um, will begin the year with some physics and they will be building prototype rockets. So if you have any two liter bottles at home of lemonade or soda <laughs> or sparkling water, they'll be repurposing those as they prototype rockets and will be leading not just one or two launches, but multiple launches outside as we use our field, our rooftop and other places as an outdoor classroom. So these are just a few things. I also want to share for our fifth grade families, you'll receive a save the date but we're excited to host a virtual Shabbat for just our fifth grade families, led by our fifth grade team, coming to you September 4th, I believe. Um, and this is a piece for you to see how in middle school we are working so hard as general studies teachers, Jewish studies teachers, arts, as well as physical education, everyone that fills our family is working together to look at how our Jewish values that Gary shared this evening, one being Achrayut, how they connect to what we learn in our lives through media and in all the topics that we study throughout the middle school journey. So that is a little piece into our curriculum. Math, I know this is a hot topic and I wanna make sure to be incredibly clear with you this evening. Um, Math this year is going to look a little bit different and in really great ways that our math team has not just been working this week on, but across the summer to prepare. This year, math will be taught daily for 55 minutes across all grades in middle school. Our fifth graders, when they are on campus and learning in person, their math will be taught in person. Tina Bolte will be leading all of our math classes. Um, I look to Tina heavily for her experience in like all of our other math teachers and in differentiating instruction, but also her experience teaching fifth through eighth grade and beyond. In grades six through eight, as I shared with a number of you, there is never a ceiling on how high our students can progress or learn. And I take it so seriously to provide each of our students with the individual challenge that they deserve as a learner. In order to provide this this year, as well as stay healthy and stay safe and be on campus as much as we can, six through eight will be taught live via four sections of math daily through Zoom. So what does this look like, you might ask? Well, I'm gonna encourage you to get your child an outstanding pair of headphones. And yes, even though it's not necessarily cool to have a microphone attached to them or looking, we're gonna have kids in the room. They'll be putting on their noise canceling headphones and they will be zooming into four different sections of math. There will be a teacher in the classroom to supervise this, who will be there to support with any troubleshooting of technology to maintain the strong classroom management and learning environment that we commit to. But we will be able to target the differentiation that we've always provided in math. Um, this is also goes to that we need to make sure that there is that challenge and support. Our teachers have been working all summer to prepare for this. So we're very excited for this and our commitment to math, as well as our success, because we have had incredible success thanks to our math department, um, will continue. So that brings us to, um, we've gone through the different subjects. I know that we had a couple of questions um, Gary, am I okay to start with these questions or do you have ones from the chat that you'd prefer? I, I have quite a few uh, and it may make sense for us to start with the FAQs and then we can move over to these. Okay, so what will specials look like? We talked a little bit about this. Um, this year our specials will be on a rotation. The students will have one special during the course of five to six weeks. But within that five to six weeks, we'll have a much increased frequency and deeper dive into what they're working on. Um, our 
teachers will be traveling to classrooms with the exception of physical education where our students will be able to be outside or in our one of our gymnasiums and um, we'll be maximizing outside learning as well you know it could be that visual arts heads outside to tackle a project as well how is recess being handled in general how will outdoor classrooms be used so again two recesses a day to provide for more movement for our students this is not taking off of your children's learning time this is what we gain from all the hallway transitions that we typically have and students will remain in their cohort when they go outside for recess and we'll have different sections of the field blacktop where the basketball hoops are where you pass through um, and they will have that time together and be supervised by a member of their grade level team so great supervision outside plenty of opportunities to get out and move um, in general how will outdoor classrooms be used so this is exciting because we're going to have i believe six total out specific outdoor classrooms but when we think about middle school um, we've been known to take our students, you know, on neighborhood walks to get them out and about. Um, teachers will have the ability to use one of our outdoor tents to actually run a reading workshop, a writing workshop, to be able to take students out in visual art and have them sketch or draw or paint. Um, our science will be, classes will be able to do labs potentially outside, launching their rockets um, or digging into other topics that they come about what will the shabbat lunch experience be for students so this is something that i believe we are going to strengthen this year and i can say that because over the number of years when we have an upstairs lunch or an upstairs shabbat we have a couple times of the typical year where our gibushim our gibush um, the two advisory groups that form a classroom community will develop their own traditions and share Shabbat together. This year, each gibush will go ahead and form those traditions. They will have opportunities as a gibush to welcome Shabbat, to participate in tefillah, but they also will have opportunities to connect virtually with those Shabbat families and head tables that they so love. I met today with our Jewish studies um, team in middle school and Hebrew team, they are truly pathfinders and so excited to build out not just traditional forms of the work that we do but really like thinking out of the box and bringing new things to engage and get students excited about the work that they're doing there will cohorts mix throughout the day this is very important the cohort, meaning a gibush or the class that your child is a part of, will not mix throughout the day. And this is something that I know has been shared with you before. Um, at recess, we are very aware that our students will most likely um, butt up against or form like where that division is of field space. They might come six feet apart from another cohort where we are able to supervise and ensure those six feet and be able to talk, but those, you know, small group pieces of mixing with other classes, we're not able to do that this year. And that is due to our focus and commitment to our health and wellness and to being in school. I don't know if we have some other questions that we want to throw out. Sorry, I was on mute and trying to ask the question. You gave me a chance. I think we'd be used to this by now. Uh, we have a number of questions. Uh, some are specific for middle school and some are general. Let's start with one uh, specific uh, to middle school and that refers to math. Uh, one question is, why not have separate sections for fifth grade math as you are for sixth grade? That's a great question. So there's a lot of thinking about this. Um, what we see when we move into middle school is that Oftentimes, our fourth graders in transitioning, their levels are not at that point defined. And we don't want to pigeonhole our students into a level at that time. What we want to do, and by having a math specialist, by having math teachers who all they do each day is to focus on teaching math, they are able to provide greater differentiation in the math class 
to meet those needs. In addition, this year, um, when we look to the spring, we lost that in-person time and we wouldn't want to quickly put students in groupings without truly understanding who they are as students. Um, so I'm looking forward to this year in our fifth grade math. We've got excellent support um, through our student services as well as through our teacher, Ms. Bolte. There's a follow-up question on that, which is who will proctor the math classes? Excellent. Um, well, because we are sticking to that cohort, um, model, it will be a member of the grade level teaching team. So it may be that um, Miss Siegel is, proctor, is proctoring or being present in the seventh grade math class or in fifth grade, it may be Miss Einberger, um, but it will be one of the grade level teachers. Great, thank you. The next question may be something that I can talk to, although you can feel free to jump in as well. Uh, what if school is in person, but there are times that my family can't or would prefer not to send our child to campus? What will learning look like for families that will not be able to physically attend school when school is in session? And I can talk a little bit about that very briefly and then say that, of course, obviously people are, are encouraged to reach out. So we obviously continue to believe that in-person education is the best way to meet the needs of our students. And we believe that uh, we have the safest school building uh, anywhere in Chicago, maybe the safest building. Uh, and we acknowledge that this is a difficult situation and that we want to meet families where they are recognizing that every family has a different circumstance. So uh, we do have a program in place. It's not a separate track because we did not want to require families to commit to a long-term option for something like this. Rather, we've put in a, a program that allows families to take advantage uh, of this option on just a day or two's notice, and likewise to return to campus should they choose to do so. And our goal with it is to allow students to keep pace with their classmates and to submit assignments, and to receive feedback from teachers, but also to provide access to their classes as they continue to progress through the curriculum, even if they're not able to physically be on campus. So, this week, every middle school classroom is being outfitted with a camera and microphone lower school as well. And students who end up engaging this way will have access to all, obviously all the assignments and materials for Google Classroom. They'll have the, the ability to join a live stream of the class using Google Meet. Uh, they'll have assistance from our ombudsman, uh, who is Andy Townhouse, uh, who is acting as our distance learning coordinator who can help troubleshoot any technical or logistical issues, and they'll have a daily group touch point with lower school in the morning and middle school in the afternoon. And again, this isn't a separate track, but we understand that this is a difficult situation for families to navigate. And uh, we want to make sure that we're meeting every family where we can. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that, Steph? No, I think you've said it. Um, we want to make sure that our kids are continuing to move forward in instruction. Um, and we also believe that the best, the best way is to have them in school, but we're not going to let anyone fall behind. We're gonna move everyone forward. Thank you. Uh, can you share what advisory and debouche will look like this year? Will there be an assigned advisor or do all students have the same advisor? Thank you so much for whomever asked this question because I should have had it in my slides to be quite honest with you. So for those of you that have had a child go through middle school before, some of you have been accustomed to what happens in eighth grade where we shift from a gibouche to focusing more on an advisory. This year across the middle school, we will be focused on a gibouche model where every morning your child will meet as a gibouche um, and they will cover everything from um, social emotional learning topics that come through. They might tackle some current events. They will work on how to be advocates for themselves and for others. All the topics that we would cover, but not in a group of eight, but rather that larger classroom community of 16 to 18. With that, we have two teachers that will be present. Um, at times, one of those two teachers an advisor may be virtual. Um, if one is our specialist, they may be virtually attending, but always to participating um, and supporting our kids. And the advisor, you should know, will serve as your point of contact as a parent. It's super important 
to all of us that you have someone to reach to as your point person, um, sort of your, your tour guide, your question answer, a cheerleader for your child during the day, and a general support. Um, Gary, I just want to throw one piece in around this. <clears throat> Here when we come in, my charge to middle school in the first couple of weeks is to really hone in on the social emotional needs of their students and embedding that also through content. We know that the spring has been incredibly challenging for our students. Many had a summer that was not the typical summer. And we know that that brings um, different feelings for different students and we're prepared to support that. And that gibouche each morning will be a place that we can really provide that as well as our advisors being available for any one-on-one -on -one turn points. Thanks. Uh, there have been a number of questions about math testing. Uh, my personal favorite was the one that said, so what up with math testing? <laughs> so I do want to honor that. I know we have uh, a number of questions from that. And uh, we have, we are, we are blessed to have Eric Keitel with us. And uh, so Stephanie, I don't know if you want to start or if we should just turn it directly over to Eric. Yeah, so I actually, I'll start, Eric, and then I'm going to toss it to you for the high school realm of things, because I know that that's on people's minds. Um, just so that all of you know, we are ramping up and preparing in the middle school to be able to provide map testing um, somewhere around the week of September 8th in that area. Um, that is important. We know that we want to get that that in as early as we can for data purposes. And also, we know that the parents are also interested. It helps provide another source of data or one source that we can then move forward with as we plan for instruction. Um, I know that there are many concerns regarding the high school front and I'm super fortunate to have Eric um, as a, a partner on this and a real leader. Eric, can you, can you shed some light on math in terms of the high school front? Sure. So uh, for those seventh and eighth grade parents who are on the call, you've already received uh, written communication for me about what's happening or not happening currently with CPS. Um, for, so I'll, I'll speak to mostly fifth and sixth grade parents right now to let you know that as part of the high school application process, generally um, CPS gives a map test at a CPS site in the spring of seventh grade. Because of the pandemic this past spring, that test was delayed until the fall of eighth grade. Um, both for CPS students as well as for independent school students like ours at Bernard Zell. Um, they have been spending the summer trying to determine when they're going to give this MAP test um, to the, this year's eighth graders. Uh, but last week when the news came out that CPS wasn't opening, that threw a further wrench into their works. So they not, have not yet shared with um, anyone, the parents or school administrators, when those test dates will actually be but presumably there will be some time this fall. My guess is uh, later than what we anticipated. We originally anticipated they would be late September, early October, um, but um, I don't even want to speculate at this point. I am in contact with um, one of the senior supervisors in this department at CPS on a regular basis, and uh, she, uh, she will keep me informed. Uh, and of course, I will give you all, you, you all that information. Um, as far as fifth and sixth and seventh grade parent, well, fifth and sixth grade parents for sure, you don't really need to be concerned about high schools right now. You want to be focusing um, your kids on their academic learning, social emotional learning, et cetera. And even for seventh grade parents who will be receiving further information from me um, in a week or so, just about the beginning of the seventh grade year, um, again, your child does not need to be focused at all on high school right now. Seventh grade year is such a fantastic year they want to be concentrating on all the educational offerings and um, I will keep you abreast of any changes or anything you need to be aware of in that regard. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one or two more questions and then I know you had some tips that you wanted to share, Stephanie. Sure. Um, one question is, if a cohort has to stay home, will they be taught through live streaming from his or her regular teacher or through a separate team? Great question. So if a cohort goes home, meaning one of the three grade level sections, that individual cohort will follow the in-person schedule. In essence, our teachers would be teaching the students 
in person. And then for that one particular class, they would provide live instruction according to the in-person schedule. Great. And uh, the, maybe the last question for now, what's happening with band and or jazz band? How will music work? Great. So this is a great question. Um, both Josh Mather has been at the forefront of this work as well as Sharkey in really thinking about how to provide those the outlet of band and the passion that so many students have. There will be a letter going home that will share with you evening and afternoon virtual band experiences that our advanced band and jazz band will be able to have as well as I believe um, our students rising up into sixth grade. Um, and then Josh has also um, done a tremendous amount of work looking at new software and thinking about how to continue that work of making music, but in more non-traditional and quite candidly, super innovative ways. Um, he's prepared for that. Great, thank you. And uh, I know you had some tips that you wanted to share, so let's... Yes. Um, these are... Uh, is, these that, are is that shared properly? Uh, right now it's, no, if you could put it on present, that would be great. Sorry, hold on. Okay. If not, I can do it in the way that you had it. No, I think we're good. Okay, great. So Gary talked at the beginning about Akhrayut, and I see this year, actually I see every year as a partnership. Um, if we're doing things right, together as a school, we're walking hand in hand with you. This year, that hand in hand, while it's gonna be virtual, um, we need to feel that strength. And some of the things that you could do to really support your child in this journey are pretty simple. The first one is, is we need to make sure that our students charge their Chromebooks each night. Our middle school students are receiving brand new Chromebooks. They need to be charged every night. Um, in addition, I'm going to urge you to make sure that your child has a pair of noise canceling headphones um, and to think about having a microphone so that they can um, clearly speak into that. Those headphones will be important. Um, I ask you to please take the time now before this, you know, the excitement of the year starts to really identify and make a space in your home for homework and distance learning. Um, this is super important. The, the bed should not be a place for distance learning. Um, having a desk or a table or a chair that is supportive and comfortable, we need students to have that. Um, the other piece is if we should go out on distance learning, I want to encourage all of us to have a schedule in and out of school. In other words, on an average day, we wake up. Granted, I know we're all dreading that September 2nd day when we are wrestling to get out of bed and get up to school. Um, but we need to have kids on a schedule where they are waking up each day, they're getting dressed, they're having breakfast and lunch, and that they're finding time to get some physical activity. And our schedule will provide and support much of that. Our advisors are also prepared to partner with you um, in supporting students and encouraging the importance of that schedule. The next one, um, and I say this over and over, read, read, and read. Um, I want to encourage you now while you have this time, go and pick out a selection, get on Prime, or you know, go ahead and check out through the public library digitally a selection of just right books and have them at home for your student. That means a book that they can read and enjoy individually um, or independently by themselves. The greatest source of homework is that reading. And we also don't want to forget reading for pleasure. That's something that we want to maintain for our students. Um, our teachers will be working to make sure that students are reading plenty with their assigned work. But we want to encourage you to up that even more um, as a family and at home. And then the next piece is, is we don't want to wait for anyone to have a chance to be struggling or to not be feeling good about something. Your child's advisor is there for you to partner with you. Many of them have already made intake calls and others are in the process. 
please use that intake call to establish the best way for the two of you to get in touch. Also understand that during the school day, teachers focus is to be teaching, but that we always maintain that 24 hour return of communication to you and know that they're there to support your child in person um, and if need be from afar. Um, and the last one is something that, that I use too um, as a, a Bernard Zell parent. If you find something that is incredibly successful that you do in your household or with your family, um, or you know, if you're, even if it's as simple as a title of a book that your child's come across or a way to keep up you know, great social distance interactions, um, please share those with others. The more that we can come together and work together and share those pieces, the stronger we will be as parents together and as colleagues and the stronger our children will be. Um, so those are just some thank tips. You. Gary, I just want to so. a huge thank you to everyone here tonight. I can't wait to welcome your kids back. And can I uh, just add two other things? Uh, one, there have been a number of questions that have come in and obviously we can't answer all of them right now. Uh, we'll ask uh, Brian to share those with Stephanie and she can reach out to people as they come through. And the second thing is to remind everybody that we do have a delayed start for middle school that we're starting for early childhood and lower school starts on the 31st, but then middle school starts on the second. And I uh, just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that. And uh, the last thing is, uh, is to reiterate what Stephanie said, thanking everybody for being here tonight and for all of your support throughout this. And also to give a uh, shout out to Steph and, uh, and her team because uh, they've really done remarkable work making sure that our kids are going to have a tremendous experience. So Stephanie, thank you. And thank you everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.